first off, I wanted to make sure every possible seat was filled, that everybody that could ask a question would ask a question, so that was partly why I wanted to submit one, and it was to show the board that we still have questions and very thoughtful, deep questions about what's taking place, and that we're not all just here to complain about what's happened, we want to know their take on it, and, and some of the facts that have yet to be brought out to us. Now, what it, what was your reaction when you realized that the board wouldn't be answering questions? I was not surprised. Um, they are very self-serving in their actions, and to be put on the spot, to be answering questions, although they do get prior notice of what the questions are basically going to be about, but the fact that they're not going to answer it, that's just the way they roll. They aren't going to be caught in a putting something on record that may come back to haunt them or contradict something they've done in the past or said in the past. So they're not going to put themselves out there. Do you expect any answers or, or maybe at the January meeting to hear them follow up on what was asked? I highly doubt it. Um, because I feel very vested in the school and the welfare of the school. Um, I've actually adopted Penn State um, because it is such an amazing institution um, and it provides such an amazing life experience, not just an education, but a life experience for the students. I think that the actions that the board has taken have put the university at substantial financial risk. They have certainly damaged our reputation. I believe that they've damaged our standing in the educational community nationwide. Um, and by their actions, they have allowed many, many people, innocent people, um, who had nothing to do with this affair, to be egregiously harmed, including the entire Penn State community, um, the State College community, um, people who aren't even directly associated with the university. The harm that they have imposed um, has extraordinary legs. Um, I think that the judgment of the board has been extremely poor. Um, and I think they need to hear from those of us who are paying attention. Uh, we don't agree with their decisions. And we'd like them to explain their actions and change their behavior. Um, and I believe that unless we speak up as individuals in life in general, that we're not fulfilling, fulfilling our obligations to the life we've been given. I think we have to speak up for the things we care about. Now, how did, what was your reaction when you realized that the board would not be providing any answers to the people that stood up to comment today? I was astounded. I was appalled. Um, they have guidelines uh, for public expression on the Board of Trustees website. I actually reviewed them again yesterday. There was no mention of that whatsoever. Um, I don't know where that came from. At the last board meeting, there were questions were raised. They were answered. So this was this was an entire change of approach um, to the opportunity to speak. I think it was done with the attempt of censoring the speakers. Do you have any anticipation? Um, you know, especially now with the auditor general's the auditor general's report being released. Do you anticipate any changes being made at all? Um, within the Board of Trustees, you know, from the inside out? Um, I'm concerned that there might not be um, because of some of the comments that have been made by some of the board members, um, essentially saying that uh, it's their board and nobody's going to tell them how to run it. I think that that is disingenuous at, at the least, um, and uh, I, I think it's impeding progress at the most. I think that that board needs huge renovation. Um, and I think that some of the recommendations were valid, entirely valid. 